Hey everyone, welcome to day seven here at the 2023 FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Championships. We're at the Whistler Olympic Park in beautiful British Columbia. It's another amazing day of racing and soaring off the ski jumps here. This is an incredible level of competition. I'm Billy DeMung and I'm here with Max Thompson. It's an, it's a, we're gonna be calling the individual Gunderson races for men's and women's Nordic combined. Max, what did we uh, just see this morning? So an amazing ski jump competition for both the men's and the women's. So we're about to see the women do a five kilometer race and the men with this 10 kilometer Gunderson race later on today. I can't wait for it, Billy. Yeah, it's gonna be super exciting, this setup. Very fast paced, all these athletes going on course very quickly, but the first one across the line wins, so we're gonna see a lot of tactics out here. It's gonna be a great race. Stay with us. All right, so this is live this morning on the, yesterday, yesterday uh, the women's ski jumping competition, HS 104. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal competition. So there we are looking at your third place jump. And now your second one, uh, Nika Previc from Slovenia. Nika Previc is the sister of Peter Previc, World Cup champion. Her other brothers, Dovin and Sena, on the World Cup as well. But her taking home this silver medal, huge. And Max, speak to this. Well, this would be the highlight of the day and the highlight of the week would be uh, Alexandria Lutit taking home gold at home in front of the home crowd. Just a phenomenal individual performance on the ski jump, making it look so easy, proving why she just won a World Cup in Japan two weeks ago. Yeah, that's got to be emotional for you, Max, as a, a coach who has worked with that athlete as a youngster, and now to see her come full circle and noteworthy too. Uh, Allie, 13 years here's ago, an interview with her now. Ski jumping for your first time right here at this very venue. Now you come back and you take the World Junior Championship title. What does that mean to you? I mean, it's improving ski jumping in Canada one jump at a time. You know, we're such a small group and, you know, to take home gold on home snow is just so special because, you know, potentially this could be the last time. It was really difficult for the Whistler Olympic Park and Black Test Nordic to get the funding to even have these facilities open. So I'm just so grateful for the sponsors who were able to support us. There's so many young athletes here watching you do this. I mean, this is Canada's first ever women's world junior championship. What kind of message do you hope that your performance today can, can show to them? I mean, no matter your situation, you can still come out on top. You know, I think my team has proved that again and again, no matter how much of an underdog you are. Although this time I wasn't the underdog, which was a new experience for me. But you know, no matter like what your situation is, you know, I come from a team that has no hills. And so our only hill gets open for two weeks every two years. So, you know, being able to win on it is so special. Yeah, and like you said, you weren't the underdog for this one, which a lot of times Canadian ski jumpers, everyone's looking at them, you know, not expecting much, but really you and Abigail have started to change that, you know, with the bronze in Beijing, now your first World Cup win just a matter of weeks ago. What is the message to the world, you know, when it comes to Canadian ski jumping? Uh, we're not going to go out without a fight and you know Abby and I are fighting every day to prove that Canada is a force to be reckoned with and I think we're doing a pretty good job at that so you know. Congratulations Thank Sally. You. Awesome so we're setting the stage for today's women's Nordic combined event at Whistler Olympic Park. They'll be jumping on the HS 104 which is the same jump from yesterday's ladies individual ski jumping competition and then they'll be doing a five kilometer Gunderson style cross country ski race. So we're gonna have a view at the highlight package from the ski jumping that occurred earlier this morning and then get ready for a, uh, a really good looking cross country race here. A Little bit of snow coming down at Whistler. It should th make things a little tougher, hey Billy? Yeah, you can see the weather changed quickly today. We started out <coughs> with clear, or with uh, no skis, uh, no snow, sorry. And uh, obviously now it's starting to snow at the beginning of this cross country race. That will play a factor in the race, but we're gonna have a look back at the jumping right now before this snowstorm blew in. And here we go. Yeah, this is Annalena Slamik um, with a third with a third place jump today. So looking very good, about around 101 meters. Um, uh, she's representing Austria. Uh, next is the Italian Annika Seif. 
uh, with another impressive jump of 100 or 92.5 meters. And that sets her up in second place going into the race. And then the winner on the hill this morning, uh, Ingrid Sinoev uh, from Norway. So she set up with a, with a small lead going into the Gunderson race later on uh, this afternoon. Well, thanks, Max. That was great. Um, just to give you folks at home some more information, Ingvild Mitskogen will start this race first as the winner of the jumping. And based on the points back was is converted to time. So Annika Seif and Annalena Slamek will be starting one second behind. So all three racers virtually starting together. And then it's 20 seconds to our next athlete, who's Natalie Armbruster of Germany. Um, we've got 24 athletes on the start list. All will be going out in about three minutes. And what's cool about the format for the Gunderson method is whoever crosses the finish line first wins. Here's our cross course profile right here. You can see 2.5 uh, kilometer course, the height difference 34 meters, and really all of that in that first big climb out of the stadium. Total climb per lap 78 meters, cumulatively 160 meters over the five kilometers. So it's very, very uh, like on and off the gas in these in these Nordic races, especially on a shorter loop like a 2.5 K max. Yeah, and they have to go up that large hill twice, so that'll be a difficult race. But what I love about this course is it finishes on this classic climb. It's got a, a long, gradual climb right before it dives into the finish. You can kind of see that on your map right there on the on the graph. And that really is where most of the races are won and lost here at the Whistler Olympic Park. These are some really impressive athletes we're gonna be watching today, Billy, to throw yourself 100 meters off a ski jump and then uh, an hour and a half later go for a 5K ski. Very different sports, so uh, What's the ideal athlete type for a Nordic combined skier? Well, I've always likened it to, <clears throat> it, they are kind of the average between a ski jumping specialist and a, and a cross country specialist. Uh, you know, to give you an example, I was about 180 centimeters tall and I clocked the scales at about 65 kilos at my best. Um, if I was ski jumping, I probably would have lost five or six kilos. If I was cross country skiing, I probably would have added that kind of weight. But beyond just the physical look of the athletes, these athletes have to have the kind of cardiovascular uh, makeup of an endurance runner or you know, cross country skier, but also maintain really quick explosivity to make that quarter of a second move on the takeoff of the ski jump from the crouch to the flying position. So <clears throat> it is a very, very demanding sport. But you can see, you can see the athletes getting ready now for this race. The snow is coming in, that'll play a role. And right now we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with the race. Coast Outdoors is Canada's premier cross country ski store. We're proud sponsors of this year's World U23 Cross Country Ski Championships at Whistler Olympic Park. We carry the best cross country skis, boots, poles, clothing and more. If you're serious about this sport, check out coastoutdoors.ca. All right, and here we are at the Whistler Olympic Park. You can see the snow has just really moved into the Callahan Valley here. Totally different scene than we've had all week, especially for the Nordic Combined and ski jumping events. Uh, Really happy this did not come down during jumping. This probably would have played a factor uh, just, you know, as it gets in the track. But here for the cross country race, it'll make this race a little bit longer and harder. Uh, but on the on the flip side, it is very, very skiable conditions. You can see these young athletes. It looks like one of the Norwegians deciding to go no gloves. Uh, <laughs> interesting choice. But uh, we've got a great lineup right now. Uh, again, we've got Invild Mitskogen of Norway. She's going to be leading us off. But Annika Seif from Austria, or sorry, from Italy, and Annalena Slamek from Austria tied one second behind. So all three of our athletes going out of the start virtually together with a 20 second lead over the next athlete, who's Natalie Armbruster from Germany. So, Billy, what's that like when the conditions change so drastically right before the event? Well, this certainly becomes a challenge for the wax techs. And, you know, they've all been out there working hard all morning trying to decide the right wax, the right structure, and they knew this was coming. So they've all been trying to make calculated guesses as how to best wax these skis. And you can see right there how intense the snow is coming down. We encountered this during the games, but we're getting ready to welcome the world here.
All right, welcome to day seven here at the Whistler Olympic Park in British Columbia. It's obviously dumping some snow. It's the first that I've seen all week. This is gonna be some challenging conditions here for the FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships individual women's uh, Nordic combined event. We had some great jumping this morning. The snow had not moved in, but you can see it has taken over the Callahan Valley right now. I'm Billy DeMung, and I'm here with my co-host, Max Thompson, Canadian Olympic Nordic Combined Athlete, as we get ready for the women's individual Nordic Combined five kilometer event. We've got a really, really exciting 24 women field here. These are pioneers in the sport. Um, it's gonna be led by Ingvild Midskogen of Norway. She's got just a second lead over Annika Sey from Italy and Annalena Slamik of Austria. All three of those athletes will be going out virtually together 20 seconds ahead of Germany's Natalie Armbruster. Max, yeah, talk terribly. us through the weather right now. Yeah, 1.8 degrees Celsius, uh, a cold feeling 1.8 today. Feels like uh, 1.2, very humid, 87.8%. Uh, uh, a light 10 kilometer an hour uh, northwest wind. Uh, shouldn't factor too much into the race, but the snow will be a major factor. Yeah, absolutely, Max. The wax techs have been out there testing, testing, testing all morning. The, the snow that was on the track did not have this new snow on it, so they've been making their best guess knowing this weather was coming in for the structure, the wax, and all those recipes that you can see finally laid on the bases of all these young women's skis. Looks like the athletes are lined up getting close to, uh, to beginning the race here. I'm always really enjoy watching the first lap of a Nordic combined race just to see what, what posturing occurs, uh, if the lead pack can hang on, or if there's a chase group. I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, how this race plays out today. Yeah, absolutely. And our top 10 will all be going out in just over a minute. So lots of cat and mouse games to be had in this five kilometer race. There's number two, Annika Seif from Italy. She again is gonna be going out just a second behind our leader, Ingvild Midskogen. And here comes number four, Natalie Armbruster. She's got the first major time deficit to overcome. 20 seconds to Midskogen. And number five, Anna Sinoner of Italy. She's starting at 37 seconds. Yeah, then There's six through seven. eight. We, we have a field really close together, 46, 48, 49 seconds back. So they should be able to work together to try to close the gap ahead of them. See all these <clears throat> young women again, pioneers in the sport of women's Nordic combined. It has not yet been added to the Olympic program. We was close to be added for this next Olympics in 2026 in, Tur in Torino, Italy, or sorry, in uh, Cortina, uh, but not yet. So these women again have been working hard their entire lives to bring themselves and their sport to the highest level. This is a very, very great event, good showing with uh, more than 10 nations right now. And here's a look at our course today. Yeah, again, a 2.5 kilometer loop uh, leads off with a fairly sizable hill uh, outside of the stadium. And then as Billy uh, alluded to earlier, uh, a lot of good transitions throughout the course. Uh, a lot of ways to make up speed, not only on the climbs, but on the downhills as well. A lot of flat areas to carry your speed and then just a phenomenal finish with a nice gradual climb that turns into the uh, home stretch on the stadium. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> Max, as you know, uh, that last climb uh, really does become often the stage for the last attack to determine the race winner. Uh, but today with this new snow, it could be interesting because you might see more athletes actually just staying together into the stadium and having to do more of a traditional heads up sprint in the last 100 or 200 meters. There's a look at number one. This is Ingvild Midskogen of Norway. And she's gonna be going out just a second ahead of number two and number three, Annika Seif and Annalena Slamik. So all three of these athletes taking the course together. It's gonna to be interesting to see what kind of tactics are played out, especially at the beginning of the race, like you, you, you said, Max. Yeah, and this Gunderson format works similar to a mass start in cross country where just the winner at the end of the race is your winner. So it's not a time trial by any stretch. Uh, England, she has a lead going into here and she's gonna to try to keep it. So we're just awaiting that uh, start and there we're we off. Now. All Ms. right, Ingvild Senevive, right Midskogen. She is on course right now. You can see that one second time gap for number two, Annika Seif and Annalena Slamik, virtually starting them all together, but at least giving them a little room to kind of spread out. You can see the Italian quickly taking over the lead. 
And right now we've got Annika Seif from Italy. She's going to power us up this first big climb. When we looked at the course profile, you noticed it was 33 meters high, this climb. That's a big climb to start out a race. The Austrian Annalena Slomik hot on her heels, and it looks like the Norwegian Ingveld Midskogen has already opened, let a gap open up. So it looks like Italy going for it right out of the gate here with Austria in tow. Annika yeah. Seif. This is great skiing by these young women. Yeah, really felt... strong, especially given the new snow, Max. Oh, absolutely. I am surprised to see they, they made some separation right off the hop. I, I do find in conditions like this, it, it's very advantage to kind of ski with the group. Um, however, we'll see some of these girls uh, coming from the back. Uh, might be fairly fast, so uh, so the leader's putting on the pressure right away to try to, to bridge a gap. And as we look at the start, this is number nine going out, Magdalena Berger. So we've missed six athletes on our cameras, but what that tells you is all those athletes are on course, and again, the first person across the line today wins. So they're all gonna be trying to catch up to those to our front group. And again, with the Norwegian uh, falling off the pace, that maybe opens up an opportunity for one of the athletes starting a little bit later to try to, to fight for that bronze medal. They'll, be, they'll see that already and be trying to catch up. So we're gonna see a very fast pace uh, on this first lap. Absolutely, and we will not be too far off. I've seen some of our, our, seen some of our first splits, so we'll see if there's been any movement between the front and the, and the and the chase packs. Yep, number two, that's Annika Seif of Italy going over the top. Austrian Annalena Slomik just behind her, although, again, a gap has opened there. So the Italian Annika Seif seeming very determined right now to take this the victory today. She's off very quickly and very bravely just dropping the athletes around her and Max, to your point, deciding to ski alone. And it looks like right now, number four, this is Natalie Armbruster of Germany, already overtaking number one, Ingvild Midskogen from Norway. So we've already had a shakeup in the medals, the virtual medals right now on course. And you look at, at this downhill, we've talked about it this week, but it's a very technical downhill, and you can really make some time or lose some time. It's a little bit more like an alpine ski course. And now they're going to head out on a little bit of a blind spot. We're going to see them again in about a minute. And now here comes the rest of the race. This is what's called a wave start. So about two minutes after the start today, all the racers left in the corral getting the green light to go. And there, right there, you see number 23, that's Tess Arnone of the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club. Also her teammate, Alexa Brabeck, also from Steamboat Springs and the United States of America. Hot on the chase right now. And here was a look at number eight. That's Kirsty Gra Kirsty Grassley of yep. Germany. Followed by Magdalena Berger uh, of Germany as well. Two teammates. Sorry, Grassley from Norway. All right, and here's number 21. This is Alexa Brabeck. Alexa, a very strong cross-country skier, grew up in Steamboat Springs, one of the biggest sports club, winter sports clubs in the world. She is skiing away from that wave start that started together and making a go of it here, trying to catch as many athletes as she can. Again, the finish, the order is the order of finish. I know it, that sounded a little redundant. The order in which these athletes finish will be the final result. So they have every incentive to try to catch the, the athletes in front of them and beat them to the line. We're uh, getting real close here to see uh, the lead pack. Uh, Nathalie, our armburster, had gained about 20 seconds last time we checked. And here we go, we've got some updates for you. Annika Seif now, 12 second lead, absolutely putting on a clinic here. She looks great skiing, she's got 12 seconds in hand already over number two. That's Annalena Slomik of Austria. And the German has moved into third position. Natalie Armbruster, 25 seconds down. So she started 20 seconds down. So obviously, Annika Seif is not only jumped herself into second, she's taken the lead, and she's now skiing at least one of the fastest times on course. So very, very determined as she makes her way up that big climb before descending into the stadium. You can just see how absolutely incredibly hard it's snowing right now. That is just a full powder storm. And here's a look, Armbruster, not satisfied with third right now, looks to be chasing very hard, chasing the Austrians, who she started 20 seconds behind. At our last check, she'd made up uh, seven seconds, and now it looks like she's gonna try to make the pass and move herself into the silver medal position. 
Yeah, and Lisa Herner is looking pretty good as well today. Uh, yeah, again, Austria. Lisa moving up from seventh already into fourth place. So a lot of activity here, just a couple kilometers into our first lap. And now this is a very quick race, Billy. It's only uh, five kilometers long. We're, we're almost near the end of the first lap. So it'll be quite interesting to see the splits uh, at the 2.5 kilometer mark uh, and, and see what can happen in this final lap. All right, and there you get a look. Number one, Ingvild Mitskogen of Norway falling a bit off the pace. So she was obviously the strongest jumper and that's what makes this so interesting. And here's number four, Natalie Armbruster. She started in fourth. She's now moving into second. She's in the silver medal position. She passes Anna Alina Slamik of Austria. Anna Alina hanging on to a medal position at the moment, but there's some hard charging athletes coming. It's gonna be a it's gonna be an incredible fight for this podium. Right now, a look at the leader on course, Annika Seif of Italy. Oh, she looks great right now. Just time trialing. She looks very her technique is excellent. She's really pushing, and especially given this new snow that's just pounding down, it cannot feel that fast or free. So she is doing a fantastic job of pacing herself and continuing to increase her lead. I hope we get another time check coming up here to share with you. The attack from the Germans here. Entering the stadium. And there we go, six minutes and 52 seconds for the first 2.5K. That's a blistering pace given the snow that I see falling right now. All right, Annika Seif continuing to just showcase all the hard work she did last summer. And here comes Natalie Armbruster, 22.5 seconds. So now she's closed a couple seconds from our last time check to our leader, Annika Seif. She's in, in second right now, pulling away from the Austrian, Annalena Slamik. And she has held time with the Annika through the first lap. She started 20 seconds back. She's 22.5 back right now. So very much in contention. Uh, this will be a very interesting final lap. All right, and Austrian teammate Lisa Herner now comes through 44 seconds behind, but only 17 seconds behind her teammate Annalena Slamik. So she's made up tremendous ground. Yeah, very impressive uh, race uh, by these women today. Annika Seif, you can see she looks very strong, smooth. It's important when the snow falls like this and the track slows down to continue to push and not burn too many matches. You can see that she's just time trialing right now, back to the top of this massive 34 meter climb. Yeah, that is an exhausting climb. Hopefully she has enough speed to carry, carry over and maintain that 20 second lead. And there's number four, Armbruster of Germany. Natalie having a great race. She's already gone from fourth to second right now. She started 20 seconds down. She was 22 seconds at the lap. And now we have the Austrian, Annalena Slamik. Slamik looks to be working it as hard as she can, but not with quite as much energy as we saw from our first two athletes. We're gonna get a look hope, in a second here. Annika Seif going over the top in 8.53. And oh, just that then, seven? that was what I was looking for. Lisa Herner. Lisa Herner popped into screen. So she has made contact with her Austrian teammate, Annalena Slamik. She's now, they're gonna be fighting for the bronze medal. And here's a look at Annika Seif of oh. Italy. Natalie closed the gap a little bit. Oh, Natalie Armbruster continues to close. Another three seconds from the lap. It's gonna be interesting. There's not a lot of real estate left in this five kilometer race, but Natalie Armbruster continuing to push very hard in the silver medal position. You can see, oh, she looks great at the top of this climb. I feel like she's smiling. All yeah. right, she pushes hard over the top. That's good for a couple seconds for sure. Yeah, 1.9 kilometers to go. So this is still a sizable gap, but there's definitely gonna be a great fight for the bronze medal and anything could happen between these top four And now athletes. you see Lisa Herner in third place. She has created a gap over her teammate. So now she is securely in the bronze medal position for the moment. Here's Armbruster coming down that big technical hill. You can see that, cr that actually uses more power than the skating up the hill. You're trying to withstand the G-forces as you go through that corner. You can either lose or gain time if you attack it, and 
Arm Brewster doing a fantastic job of attacking that descent. Yeah, Here comes Herner right now. Yeah, if you're looking to gain speed on the downhills, you're uh, you're definitely not getting any rest. This will be an exhausting final kilometer for these women today. Yeah, they're that stepping around this uh, around the turn is doing the work of what an alpine ski edge would be doing in the turn. So, all right, now you can see Herner has put some serious real estate between her and her teammate Annalena Slamic. So, she is securely in the bronze medal position. I don't see that changing. The question is, can she continue to gain ground? on Natalie Armbruster from Germany. That was Cindy Hash we just saw ski by, uh, representing Germany, and then our Japanese athlete, Hazuki Aikida. And there you get a look right now from the 3.1 meter uh, kilometer mark. Annika Seif in, uh, in first, followed by, oh, sorry. I'll just let you take a look. Yeah, yeah Magdalena Berger in seventh place, followed it's by. It's notable though, number and ninth place right now is bib number one. So that's what's exciting about Nordic Combined, Max. And you know, like from experience, you, you have some jumpers that can win the jumping, but they can't hang on in the race. And then racers who can't jump as well, trying to overcome the time deficits. It's, it's a really, it's a test of the ultimate ski athlete because you have to do t two, completely opposite ski disciplines. Yeah, no, they, there couldn't be less in common between going off a ski jump and uh, doing a cross-country ski race. And here we go, we get a time check from the 4.1 kilometer mark. Annika Seif coming through at 11.30. Natalie Armbruster conti continuing to gain ground. Another couple seconds, she's pushing very hard. Oh, 17 seconds separating our top two right now with Armbruster still charging. Lisa Herner at 42.5. And this is the penultimate climb. You can see Armbruster fueled by the sight of the leader on course, Annika Seif, right now. She's going to charge this last hill. And we have a fight for third place going on between the two Austrian teammates. Lisa has come from behind, but uh, Annalena is still very close. Yeah, just nine seconds separating them right now. I love how hard Natalie Armbruster is charging right now. She she is hunting Annika Seif. If there was another 5K, it would be a very interesting race. But it's I think right now Annika Seif is about to top out this final climb and make her way down into the stadium. I think she's going to be able to clinch this right now. She looks great. She's very smooth, continuing to just time trial, ski her pace, ski her race. That's so impressive watching an athlete take charge right from the beginning and never looking back. Absolutely. That's a tough way to race. It's a brave way to race, and it's going to pay off right now for Annika Seif of Italy. I can see by the speed right now that that new snow definitely playing a factor. You can see Armbruster continuing to just push, skating with no poles. It's just doing everything you can to continue to, to, to make as much speed as possible. Yeah, and speed is hard to come by right now. It looks like things have even slowed down as the race has gone on. But I can't Here say how- Here comes Annika Seif. Oh, Armbruster right there though. I think she's closed quite a bit more time, but there's only a few hundred meters left. Annika Seif needs to continue to push right now. Armbruster is not far behind. She's done an incredible job starting 20 seconds behind, just making up time every opportunity, pushing on the uphills, attacking the downhills. But Seif doing an absolutely perfect job today, metering her effort from the line. She went out hard. She's been able to carry this all the way through. Her smile starting to develop as she realizes she is going to become a junior world champion here at the Whistler Olympic Park. What an impressive race by Annika Seif of Italy. World junior oh. Nordic combined champion. There it is. Congratulations, Annika. And, in and here comes Natalie Armbruster. She had a great cross-country leg, passing her teammate, or sorry, passing uh, two other athletes to take the silver medal. 
Oh man, I loved watching her ski. She was just pushing so hard the entire race. Just 16 seconds at the finish line. And here comes Lisa Herner of Austria. Started 48 seconds back today. What, what an impressive race. Uh, this entire field, they, they showed some pretty gutsy racing today in these tough conditions. Absolutely. A well-earned bronze medal right now for Lisa Herner. 41 seconds down, so she made up some time on our leader, but she, more importantly, was able to pass four of the athletes who started in front of her to take the bronze medal for Austria. Absolutely, and here, bib number three, Annalena Slamet coming in fourth place. Really gutsy race by the two Austrians. I love it when she went straight to her teammate. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Bib number 13, who we haven't seen much of, uh, Cindy Haas, has gained a lot of ground, it looks like. Yeah, and number 11, Trina Gopfert of Germany. Some of these girls wish if they just could have gotten three or four more meters on that hill, how competitive it would be. And that is that is the glory and the frustration of Nordic combined. Here we go, number 13 will be coming in for fifth place right now. Cindy Haas of Germany. And then we have her German teammate, Trine Gopfert, coming in just behind. And Magdalena Berger. So all the Germans now coming across the line. It's great to see this strong contingency from Germany making the trek here to British Columbia. Now our top Japan Japanese athlete of the day, uh, bib number 12, Hazuki Aikida coming in. Great race, she moved up four spots uh, from the ski jumping to the cross country. And another look at our winner right there, Annika Seif of Italy. She did a fantastic job. And here comes a big pack into the finish. Uh, Ingrid Latte of Norway, uh, followed by uh, Greta Panzani of Italy. And here comes our leader from jumping, Ingvild Midskogen. Yeah, really impressive on the jump hill today and still a very, very competitive top 12 finish at the World Junior Championships. All right, right now, Minja Korhonen of Finland coming in. Really strong sprint effort from her. She's moved up a ton of places. She'll be in ninth, so she's passed seven athletes on course today. And here comes that number six, Ingrid Lotta of Norway. And number 15, Greta Pinzani of Italy. And here comes our leader after jumping, Ingvild Midskogen. And it looks like a very strong race from bib number 21. Uh, Alexa Bravik out of uh, Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club. Yeah, she is a fantastic cross-country skier. She really threw down, passing, I think, nine athletes. Let's see, Alexa started number 21, finishing in 14th, so seven athletes. Alexa Brabeck having a great race out there. Ingvild Midskogen, Fantastic ski jumping this morning. Only, I believe, if I do the math right from her birthday, uh, only 16 years old. Yeah, she is. So she is many four more world, juniors. more world juniors to go. And again, here comes Tess Arnone of Steamboat Springs and the USA Nordic Women's Nordic Combined National Team. She looks strong as well as she sprints for the finish line. She also moving up seven places. Eight places, great job for Tess Arnone. Here comes number 10. Yeah, that's uh, Tesha Pavic out of Slovenia. One thing I'll say, uh, uh, speaking about our Norwegian there, at 16 years old, the, the easiest way to mature as a Nordic combined athlete is through getting much faster at the cross country. So if she's uh, leading this field in ski jumping at the age of 16, Lots of room for improvement right now, there. Absolutely. Ideally be a contender in and the that next can three be, years to come. That can be one of the frustrating points of Nordic Combined. As number eight, Kirsty Grossley of Norway crosses the line, followed by number seven, uh, by number 19, Alva Thors of Finland. Yeah, you know, you can be a great ski jumper at an early age because it's more of a technique sport. But the, the endurance engine, the endurance engine of, that required of cross country skiing takes years to develop. Thousands of hours on skis, without Absolutely. a doubt. Absolutely. And number 20 right now. Uh, that's out of Finland, Anna Kirko, uh, as well as number 18 from Slovenia, Brina Suznik. And it looks like we've got another finisher right now, number 22. Uh, that's Teresa Kold Koldvatska from the Czech, Czech eye. And right behind her, with number 20, Anna Kirko from Finland. All right, 
Well, what a race it's been so far. I love watching all these athletes come in. It was such a competitive field today. So impressed to see these Nordic combined uh, women. Uh, when I used to compete, it was uh, it was quite rare to see this established tour and, and how phenomenal they are at ski jumping and cross country skiing. I was really impressed at the ski jump today, watching those athletes uh, jump around 95 meters. Yeah, this is a very good level at the World Junior Ski Championships. It's great to see these young women who have pioneered this sport competing here at the Whistler Olympic Park. Great event here today and really challenging conditions on the uh, cross country course. That new snow is not easy on the legs. It requires more power uh, to get through and push your way around the course than it would be just a few hours ago before the snow started, so. Yeah, night and day condition change from the, uh, the ski jumping earlier this morning. There's number 18. That's Brina Susnik from Slovenia. I love seeing all these smiles after the race. All these girls should be very proud of themselves. Absolutely. And there's a look at the last downhill on course out there. You can see the snow just continuing to pound. We're gonna have a break now as we prepare for the women's award ceremony and the men's individual Gunderson race, which will be a 10 kilometer race. We've got a great setup there with some really long jumps this morning. One of our American athletes, Nicholas Malasinski, will be leading our, us out on the men's individual Gunderson. But again, this snow is unrelenting. It is not supposed to stop. So the Wax Techs now will be getting feedback from the women's athletes and uh, making any last minute uh, changes to the men's skis. And again, cross country ski waxing is a, a bit of art and a bit of science. Uh, so a lot goes into a day like today where you've got the changing conditions on course. Absolutely, and it was d nice to see we got another uh, flawless ski jump competition off. Uh, this snow during the ski jump event would be uh, pretty intense. Yeah, absolutely. But Whistler Olympic Park having some of the new techno newest technology like the refrigerated ice track uh, would be able to continue to host ski jumping events even in conditions like this, but I'm like you, Max, I, I prefer uh, to not have to try to, to push through really hard weather on the ski jump. And here's a look now at our final result. Annika Seif of Italy, she just did a tremendous job taking an early lead and just pushing alone for five kilometers. Natalie Armbruster of Germany, she started 20 seconds back and she finished in second. And Lisa Herner there from Austria moving up past four athletes. She started in seventh and came in to take the bronze medal. Yeah, that was a very exciting race with a lot of, a lot of position changes. It's, a, it's always a lot of fun to watch. And easy to watch. You know, you don't need a calculator to watch Nordic Combined. I think that's that's one of the uh, the appealing things uh, to for spectators. So, great, great day here. The, the new snow, obviously, uh, a bit of a challenge, but makes for such a beautiful backdrop here. You know, and Max. Again, going back to the waxing, now that the women have raced, the wax techs did their best effort, but they're for sure gonna be getting information from these young women about how their skis felt on different parts of the course, and then going back to their uh, stock of wax, skis, and structure, and trying to make any last minute adjustments for the men's race, which starts in less than an hour. Yeah, absolutely. There's always a lot of information being shared, uh, especially during these days where there's multiple races with uh, with the same team. So, you know, the Americans, the Austrians, the Germans, they'll talk to each other, they'll help each other out the, uh, with their respective same nation. So yeah, that'll be interesting for, for how it goes with the guys today. Yeah, and what you kind of alluded to it, but I do think that's a bit unique to Nordic Combined. It's a bit smaller discipline, and there's a lot of camaraderie between the nations. I saw the Slovenian wax tech working with the American wax tech earlier. And here's a look at our our medal winners. Love seeing those smiles. There's Annika Safe from, from Italy again. I thought she just did a tremendous job. I really love the guts that it took to uh, to just go out and take the lead and go. 
All right, and folks, we're going to be back here soon for the men's Nordic combined race. So don't go anywhere. We'll be here, but we'll be back here in about half an hour for the men's Nordic combined. Time to work here, Yorn. Thank you. <laughs> Come on over.
All right, and welcome to day seven of this exciting. All right, and welcome to day seven of this exciting FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships here at the Whistler Olympic Park in British Columbia. I'm your host, Billy DeMung, alongside Max Thompson, Canadian Olympic athlete in Nordic Combined, and we're here for the men's Nordic Combined individual Gunderson start. Max, the weather's changed a little bit today. Yeah, I'd have to say it was gorgeous this morning. No precipitation, no snow. Now it's really coming down. Should make for a very exciting race. Well, we just saw an incredible race from the women's field. Now with this new snow, the Wax Tech's making final adjustments, preparing uh, the skis the best way possible to accommodate for these conditions. It's gonna be a real barn burner of a race. We have American Nicholas Balasinski out in front of this field. Really exciting setup. A lot of fast athletes just behind are gonna be chasing him. It's gonna be a really, really fun race to call. Yeah, we had 42 athletes start the competition today. It should be a very intense field, especially to round out that top 10. All right, and here we go. Yesterday's junior men's cross country race right now. These are highlights from obviously different weather conditions than we have today. This was an individual start 10 kilometer race, a much different format. These athletes just, just testing themselves against the clock. Right now you've got bib number 167. Our bronze medalist yesterday. Lars Vegan. And here's our champion right now from Finland. Finland. All right, much different day today, as you can see. We've got a lot of weather that's moved in to the Whistler Olympic Park. It's absolutely dumping snow right now. I'm Billy DeMung again, and I'm here with Max Thompson to call this 10 kilometer individual Gunderson event. So unlike yesterday's race where the, the men were starting 30 seconds apart, racing the clock and, and having to operate off of information that they were receiving from coaches out on course, this will be a pursuit format. So the setup from jumping this morning, uh, basically all these athletes took a single jump. You can see Nicholas Malasinski will start with bib number one at zero. And then Yuri Konvalinka of the Czechia will start 17 seconds behind Andreas Odison of Norway at 21 seconds. And you can see what a tight group this is with Hector Kapustik just a second behind Iacopo uh, from Italy, another second behind. But the first athlete across the finish line today wins. You can see 13th, Tristan Sommerfeld. He was the anchor for the men's relay uh, for Germany who won the gold medal two days ago. And here's some other American news. You can see Evan Nichols, number 24. So we've got 39 athletes that will start this race. And we're gonna have a look right now at the highlights from this morning's jumping competition. Yeah, it was an excellent jumping competition today. So we're gonna have a look at the men's top three jumps from this morning's competition. Uh, yeah, this is uh, bib number 30, Jan Harbas from Poland. All right, this is Andreas Odison of Norway, sorry. Um, Andreas Odison jumping to third. Here is Yuri Konvalinka of Czechia. Big jump for this young athlete. I loved his flight position. He got super, super flat on his skis, was able to get on top of the air and carry it all the way down the hill. And here comes the American, Nicholas Malasinski. Nicholas Malasinski just clutch performance.
absolutely motionless in the air, perfect style. I mean, as perfect as you ever get, the judges gave him high rewards, and it will will carry him onto this afternoon's Nordic race in the lead, 17 seconds ahead, ahead of Yuri Konvalinka and 21 seconds ahead of Andreas Odison. Now, Billy out. All right, right now we're gonna take it down to Tom, our field reporter, Tom Steven, who's there with Nathaniel Ma, former Nordic Mind skier from Canada, to give us a little report course side. Hey, Nathaniel, what, what are your expectations for this race and what do you think is gonna happen? Well, with the snow coming down the way it is uh, and the gaps not being huge, I really think we're going to see a lot of teamwork. Well, not teamwork necessarily, but a lot of athletes working together. You know, we might see a try, uh, might see a few athletes try and go out on their own. But like I said, you know, the snow is going to start to accumulate on the course and really slow things down. So going at it on your own is going to be really difficult. And if someone is going to try and do it, they have to be sure that they can put a lead on that's going to stick all the way to the finish. But my expectation is, like I said, we're going to see a, a group form around 10 to 15 athletes is my guess in that lead. Uh, and, you know, it's all going to come down to that final hill on that final lap. We saw it in this Breathe event. In. You know, I think Breathe it's going to be very similar, uh, similar tactics for this one. And Nicholas, starting number one, do you think that he will be in that group and uh, be a contender for a podium or if not a win? Yeah, I think Nicholas, he has a bit of a lead and there's a there's some fast athletes behind him. So I think he's going to go out pretty conservative, um, kind of wait for them to catch up to him so he can hitch a ride, work with them, hopefully tuck in, you know, try and stay really rested because he knows that last lap is going to be tough and it's, it's going to be full on guns out. So, you know, the best the best play for him, I think, would you know relax stick in try and be conservative try and be smart uh and leave it all out there you know americans have a pretty good track record on this course you know with bill commentating obviously we're all going to be looking at that same place on the course for him to go uh and i think you know i think he's got a really good shot today he's a really strong skier he's proven it on the jump hill how capable he is and he's experienced he's only 19 years old but you know, he has a ton of continental cup experience and world cup experience so i think he's going to go out there and hopefully Hopefully show some magic today. Awesome. Thanks, Nathaniel. All thanks right. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Nathaniel. That was a great look ahead. You saw a brief glimpse of the course map. We've got a 10 kilometer race, a 2.5K course. So they'll do that four times. The first climb out of the start will be the same as we saw in the women's race. It's got a height of 34 meters so a sustained climb right out of the start and then a second big climb right before the finish usually the decisive climb if athletes are together at the end of the race rather than waiting for the split lines you'll see some of the athletes starting to try to vie for the race we're going to be back with this race momentarily but first a little word from our sponsors Coast Outdoors is Canada's premier cross-country ski store. We're proud sponsors of this year's World U23 Cross-Country Ski Championships at Whistler Olympic Park. We carry the best cross-country skis, boots, poles, clothing, and more. If you're serious about this sport, check out coastoutdoors.ca. All right, well, thank you to Coast Outdoors for supporting this great event here at the Whistler Olympic Park. I'm Billy DeMung. I'm here with Max Thompson. You can see the snow just continuing to just pound right now. It makes for challenging conditions for the Wax Techs, but Max, as we talked about before, Wax Techs now getting some feedback from the women's field, making some final adjustments for these men's skis for this race. A big change though from earlier this week. Oh, absolutely. These uh, are completely different conditions. The times will be a little bit slower uh, than we saw previously. It's also a longer race than these men did in the team event with the only doing a five kilometer uh, leg. All right, and in addition to the race we're about to see, we also have an overall competition going on between these nations for the top nation at the Junior World Championships here at the Whistler Olympic Park, and that's the Mark Hodler Trophy. Mark Hodler presided over the International Ski Federation for 47 years. You can see that trophy here. It's taking a cumulative score across all these disciplines of Nordic skiing, ski jumping, Nordic combined, and of course, cross-country skiing, and that will be awarded to the top nation from this week. Oh man, you can see these athletes now warming up. <laughs> like horses in the gate, everybody's twitchy, everybody's getting their jitters out, making sure they have everything dialed in. And we're gonna be coming back with this race in just a few.
All right, and welcome to day seven here at the snowy Whistler Olympic Park. This is day seven of the FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. Weather has really changed. I'm your host, Billy DeMung, alongside Canadian Olympic Nordic Combined Skier, Max Thompson. Max, you can see it's just pounding snow today. It is coming down really hard today, Billy, and we have a pretty good idea for this field, having watched all these athletes, or most of them, compete two days ago in the Men's Nordic Combined Team event. Uh, this is shaping up to be an extremely tight race, with the American uh, leading the way with a 17-second gap. We've got Nicholas Malasinski leading the race today, as you said, 17 seconds over. Uh, Yuri Konvalinka from Czechia. We'll give you a look at that here before the start of the race, but you can see these athletes now warming up, making final adjustments. And if you've tuned in before, we've seen a lot of sunny pictures, a little bit of fog here and there, but this is the first day where it's just a blizzard out here. So athletes, you know, making a completely different selection today of skis, wax techs running around. Max, what's the weather like? Yeah, it's uh, 1.8 degrees Celsius, uh, feels like minus 1.2, uh, very humid at 87.8% and uh, a light breeze coming out of the northwest, very consistent to the conditions the women just skied in. Yeah, so this is going to be a really, really uh, different race than we've seen so far with this new falling snow. It's going to be a little bit slower. We're going to anticipate that this race is going to be favoring the stronger uh, athletes in this field. Uh, right now, again, there's a look at bib number one from the United States of America. This is Nicholas Malasinski. Nicholas has had a fantastic young career on the World Cup and the Continental Cup. Uh, he's been very good at these Junior World Championships in the past. This is his last year at, an, as an, at 19 years of age, and he's in very, very good position to make a mark. I'm so excited to see him uh, come through in the lead here right now. And again, 17 seconds ahead of Yuri Konvalinka of Czechia, Andreas Odison of Norway, 21 seconds back. And then you can see how close these time gaps are. Hector Kapustik at 22 seconds, Ayakoba Bertolis at 23 seconds. And again, with Nordic combined, they will go out with those time gaps. And then whoever crosses the finish line first wins the overall title today. Yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on number 13, Tristan Sommerfeld from Germany. He's the one that anchored that German lap to win the team event two days ago. A very strong cross country skier. And there are some other Americans in the field with Evan Nichols. You can see right now, we've got the athletes making their way to the start. 39 athletes taking the start this morning, uh, this afternoon here at the Whistler Olympic Park. <laughs> I still can't get over the shift in weather. This reminds me of the 2010 Olympic team event that we competed in here. And ski selection did play a big role that day as well. Here they are lining up, getting into the gates, and here's a look at the course. Yeah, Billy, it's the, uh, the same course we just saw the, the, the women skiing on. However, the men are doing four laps. Again, that big hill coming out of the stadium with a 40, 34 meter gain. Um, a total climb of 78 meters on the course. There was a second hill right at the end of the, of the lap that takes you into the stadium and the home stretch. So there's a lot of very exciting places in this course for, for a lot of lead changes and a lot of uh, great racing. Yeah, if you look at that graphic, you can see that second hill, pretty substantial, about 20 meters in climb there. And that is usually where races are decided. But on a snowy day like today, we may see any packs that are together at the finish actually waiting more to go more into the stadium just because of the slow speed on the snow and how exhausting it's going to be to just plow through all this new powder. Yeah, Billy, that's right where you made your move back in 2010 when you won the uh, individual men's large hill event. It's true. And it's also uh, where I tried to make it in the team event, but the new falling snow definitely playing a role a little bit in the ski speed. And here we go. We got a big, broad look at our field right now. We're just moments away from the start of this individual Gunderson men's event, 10 kilometers. And of course, Max, I'm really excited to see Nicholas Malasinski of the United States wearing bib number one. He looks very stoic. Nicholas also a dual citizen of Finland. And here he is on course exploding out of the gate. So we're going to see here tactically, is Nicholas going to try to hang on to this lead or is he going to wait for others to ski with with five skiers just under 25 seconds behind him? 
five of the fastest skiers in this field as well. What's been interesting with Nordic Combined, there goes number two, Yuri Konvalinka of Czechia, and number three, Andreas Odison of Norway. And then again, here goes Hector Kapustik of Slovakia and Iacopa Bartolis of Italy. So we've got a five athletes on course already as number six, Eider Johan Strom of Norway takes to the course. Nicholas Malasinski charging out of the start, kind of answering my initial question, is he gonna wait for these guys? I think he's gonna make them work to catch him, no doubt. Yeah, I was a little surprised to see how quickly he flew out of that gate, knowing that there's a 10 kilometer race and a pretty strong group behind him. But again, he's a very smart racer. I'm sure he has a plan. Well, Nicholas is very experienced. He is a calculated racer. I saw him with some recent success at the World University Games, taking four medals in that, in that championships. Here goes Richard Stenzel, number nine of Germany, also going onto the course very fast. And now the athletes that are chasing need to start hard because to have a chance, they need to, to regain some of the time that they lost in the jumping portion of this event to get into that fight for the podium. Yeah, and again, we have uh, 20 athletes all coming out within one minute and 24 seconds. In conditions like that, that time can be made up. Yeah, very quickly. That's a very strong group we're seeing right there, uh, uh, led by uh, Lukas Dozal out of the uh, Czech eye, uh, Nick Schoenfeld uh, from Germany, and uh, Kilian Gudel uh, out of Austria. Yeah, it's interesting on a day like today, it is a bit advantageous to go out behind somebody to be able to follow their tracks through this new powder. But again, Nicholas Malasinski with a 17 second lead has his head down. He's gonna make these guys earn every second if they're gonna to try to catch him. Evan Nichols uh, just started his race. He actually had the fastest split time during the men's team event. So he's also one to watch for. Coming from 24th place, I'm sure he'd be a little bit happier to be further up in the start list, but he can still do damage from 24. And here's a look at the top of that big climb, the 34 meter climb right out of the start right now. You can see number eight, that's Richard Stenzel already passing number four, Hector Kapustik. So already some changes in the top 10 right now going on. And here's the chase pack on course right now. That's number five, Iacopa Bortolis of Italy. He was very fast in the team relay the other day. Yeah, the Italians, uh, Italians have a very strong history of fast cross country skiers in order combined. and our chase group working their way out onto the back end of the course. We're gonna be seeing our leader here pretty soon, Nicholas Malasinski. Our last few athletes making their way out of the start gate right now. That's number 36. That's Jan Semek uh, out of Czechia. All right, there's a group of athletes. And we talked about this a little bit during the women's race, but. This descent on the blue 2.5 is very alpine-like. The corners are sharp, there's a lot of speed, and the athletes have to use even more energy than they use on the uphills to, to take a fast line around that corner, essentially using their legs like metal edges. And here comes Nicholas Malasinski of the United States of America, still charging hard right now. I think he's put more distance uh, between him and second place. And as he makes his way, this is the final climb before the stadium right now. So he'll get his first trip of four up that 20 meter climb. Um, again, 20 meters of height is quite a lot uh, of power. So he's gonna go over that and make his way into the stadium. And there's his teammate, Evan Nichols, going onto the back end of the course. And here comes the chase group, Max. I think you're right. I do think that the time gap is, is growing. I think Nicholas is really determined today. Number five, Iacopa Bortola setting the pace right now. Andreas Odison of Norway and Yuri Konvalinka, bib number three and two, respectively. You have to assume bib They're number five. They're starting up the, the climb right now. Here comes Nicholas. He's at the top of that same climb. So again, Max, we're gonna find out soon, but we're, we, it looks like Nicholas Malasinski at least holding his lead, if not increasing it. And there's a second chase group just coming into the bottom of your screen. That's a gutsy racing style and I really like it. You have to assume too, uh, bib number five, uh, Jacopo Portales is up. Uh, probably pretty excited after seeing his teammate win gold just an hour ago. And again, we talk about plowing the powder. You can see Nicholas setting fresh tracks right there for the rest of the field, but he seems like he's very 
very motivated and just skiing his own race, and that's just a great thing to see from this young American. Andreas Odesen uh, hanging in right behind Iacopo. This is the chase group. So currently, number five, Iacopa from Italy in second place, Odison in third, and number two, Yuri Konvalinka in fourth. So they are fighting for medals right now. It's going to be interesting to see, are they hungry enough to try to chase Malasinski, or are they already settling in to a fight for silver? Coming. Again, this is a 10-kilometer race. So as Nicholas comes through the stadium right now, he's finishing his first of four 2.5-kilometer laps here at the Whistler Olympic Park. We'll see the split time coming up as well uh, to compare these speeds to the race from two days ago on the same track just to show uh, what these snow conditions do for the times of racers. You can see Nicholas leaving the stadium and in the far distance. You see this chase group now on your screen. They're just rounding the end of the stadium. They'll be going through the lap lane, finishing their first of four laps. And here they come through the lap lane. Iacopa Bartolis of Italy continuing to set the pace for this chase group. Odison of Norway content to just sit in right now. There is an advantage in cross-country skiing. And there we go, 38 seconds right now. Nicholas Malasinski pulling away. He's more than doubled the lead he started with over the chase group. Oh, that's a huge gain for the first lap of this 10-kilometer race. And there's Coach Greg Erlinzig chasing him up that hill. Picking up over 20 seconds. There's Tristan Sommerfell already moving up to seventh place, a minute and seven back. <laughs> together with his two teammates, Richard Stenzel and Benedict Grobach, you can see all at about a minute and seven behind the American. And here's a look right now at that chase group being led by the Italian Iacopa Bartolis. He continues to set the pace. Odison and Convalinka content to just let the Italian do the work right now. It seems to me that they're just skiing the race right now for silver. Malasinski putting on an absolute show. 21 seconds he picked up on just two and a half K over the chase group. That's a massive, massive gain. It's hard not to notice Evan Nichols made a massive charge at loop as well. Billy, uh, that happens some days. An entire nation seems to have a good race. Do you think they're building off the momentum of Nicholas winning the ski jumping competition? Or well, did the team just do a great job and or is it a combination of both? It's it's a little bit of everything. It, I mean, their skis have to be running well. Hats off to the Wax Techs from the United States. And then, I mean, honestly, the energy of watching your teammate jump to first place is huge. I saw the American Four Pack heading to lunch together, uh, really supporting each other. So absolutely feeding off each other. There's a look at number 10, Maci Garbisch of Slovenia. And here we go, back to our chase group. And there's another split, 34 seconds. So Iacopa picking up about four seconds to Mal or three seconds to Malasinski from the stadium. So they're still pushing hard, but that's a big gap to overcome in about seven kilometers of racing. That's Actually, split I, wouldn't, coming. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next group join that chase group and end up with six or seven athletes really fighting for a couple medals at the end here. No doubt, Max. There's for sure athletes that are not in the fight for the medals that are going to leave it all out here at the beginning of the race to try to regain contact. Right now, you can see that pack of three. There was nobody else in screen, so I don't know how far back to the next group, but you can see them coming through again. Look at how they have to use their legs to push against gravity going through those corners. That's really taxing. It does not allow for any recovery. And now you see the Italian motioning to the Norwegian, Odison and Konvalinka. Hey guys, it's time for you to take a turn at the front. Yeah, Billy, that's a situation you're, you're quite familiar with, especially when you were always one of the strongest cross country skiers on the course. Uh, you had to do a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the hard work out there. Yeah, and obviously Iacopa was content to set pace for the first lap, but he's saying, boys, if you want to ride on me, I'm going to need some help from you. And there's Nichols right now passing another group of athletes. It looks like he's already moved well into the top 20, starting in 24th. He's passing bib number 16. Yeah, and that's Love Samuel from Austria. So Nichols already overcoming a massive time gap. He skied the fastest time in the men's relay, the five-kilometer event that we saw on Wednesday this week. 
He started a minute and 52 behind today. So 40 seconds behind nip bib number 16, Samuel Lev. He's made up a tremendous amount of time. And here's a look at our leader on course, American Nicholas Malasinski. Look at the determination on his face. He's got his glasses up, partially for fog and snow, but partially he's just determined right now as he goes up the final climb to finish the second of four laps. He's just crushing it up this climb. Absolute time trial style. This is a man on a mission right now. Billy, how impressive is it to see an athlete gap a chase pack all on his own? Oh, this is an incredibly gutsy race from Malasinski. To go out of the gun with number one and only 17 seconds in hand with this kind of snow and just keep going. Uh, very, very gutsy racing from the American. I'm really, really impressed with his poise right now. He looks comfortable. He looks confident. He's pushing hard, but not too hard. And here's that chase group just entering the bottom of the hill right now. I don't know how long I talked for, but I think it was at least 30 seconds. There's number five, Ayakopa. He's making the pass again to take the lead. I guess the help he's getting wasn't enough, so he may try to snap the rubber band right now and go it alone if he's hoping to hold on to second because as you predicted, Max, we've got a big group. It looks like five athletes chasing down our medal pack right now. And that's Tristan Sommerfeld. You called it the German who anchored the gold medal relay team on Wednesday, leading the charge to regain contact for Team Germany to the medal podium right now. And it looks like Iacopa Bartolis did indeed separate himself from La Andreas Odison and Convalinka. He's trying to secure himself a silver medal right now. All right, so right now on course, Nicholas Malasinski leading in a, in a defiant fashion. He is out in front. You see Iacopa Bartolis right now from Italy. He has separated himself from the other two athletes that were chasing Malasinski. That's a good move as that group of five comes up to join the fight for medals, led by Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany, and I believe two other Germans in tow with Benedict Grobert. Runs. Here he comes, looking so good. Again, and Richard Stenzel. And here's Malasinski. He, he goes through the halfway the mark in the race. 12.36. He's absolutely flying. 12.36. Just 20 seconds slower than the uh, 5K relay leg he skied the other day. And again, 20 seconds in these conditions. I mean, I would think these conditions are 20 seconds slower to begin with. So. Again, Malasinski skiing a phenomenal race. Iacopa Bartolis now coming through 27 seconds down. So he's picked up another seven seconds. Cumulatively about 10 on that lap. So he's not done yet. And here comes Tristan Sommerfeld. He's, he's made contact now with the Norwegian Andreas Odison, who's leading through the lap, but 39 seconds and only five kilometers of skiing to go. Odison now leading a group of, I think, seven athletes as Malasinski on your screen right now powers his way up for the third time up this massive 34 meter climb. He's looking strong, he's looking determined. Malasinski trying to go gun to gun all the way around this 10 kilometer lap at the Whistler Olympic Park. Billy, what do you think that about that move by Iacopo uh, going solo to try to track down uh, Nicholas? Very smart move because now that group that we just saw me uh, get contact with the Norwegian uh, Odison's group. You can see Summer, uh, this is, is that Sommerfeld? That is Sommerfeld there. He's leading now. Sommerfeld is now in a medal position. So he's more likely to get comfortable with a bronze medal and give up if Iacopa keeps the hammer down. And we know he knows how to finish a race. So again, Iacopa calculated this group was gonna come up. He didn't wanna be in the fight with that many athletes. He's decided to go it alone. He's still chasing Malasinski, but he also has given himself some breathing room over that big chase group. Here's Malasinski over the top of the climb on the third lap, 14 minutes and 25 seconds, 5.6 kilometers in. You can see his American teammates, Tate France, cheering him on there over the top of the hill, and he makes his way onto the descent. He pushes hard over the top. I love to see that. Oh, and Tristan Sommerfeld has gotten into third place, leading that group with 
Eider, Johan Strom, Yuri Konflik, uh, Benedict Greibert, and You can and see Iacopa right now leaving your screen. He's in second. Tristan Selmerfeld pushing hard to get, get contact with the Italian and take the silver medal position. Oh, that's a big group, but they're kind of breaking apart right now. Sommerfeld's effort has split the group apart. Malasinski through the downhill, out into the back stretch of the course right now. So, Billy, what is Nicholas' style in a race? Does he try to get that gap and take it in all the way, or, or can he compete in a sprint if they do catch up? He's a smart racer. He's going to leave something if that happens, but I think he's determined to try to lead it all the way. Here's Iacopa. You can see Sommerfeld on his heels trying to, trying to pass him, about to make contact for the silver medal position. They're pushing really hard, too, for the middle of the race. So while Malasinski is skiing alone, he's not having to endure the type of accelerations that this group is dealing to each other, trying to vie for position and create the gaps to secure uh, a position, you know, breaking up the group. And there's Andreas Odesson making his way down the hill. So he's now fallen out of medal contention. The Norwegian skiing a strong first couple of laps behind the Italian, but now kind of on his own, somewhere around seventh place. And here's a big group. This is a real big group, and you can see number 22. That's Manuel uh, Senderer, who's leading that group. And I saw number 24, Evan Nichols, from the United States, also skiing a fantastic race. He had the fastest time in the relay. He's moved up at least 10 places already. Great to see this kind of a, a effort from Evan Nichols from the United States of America. And the snow, you can see just accumulating right now. They're plowing through fresh powder. It'd be a great day at the resort, but it's a tough day at the Whistler Olympic Park for these Nordic combined athletes. And that's Nichols right there at the top of your screen going behind the tree. Here comes Balasinski. He's coming at the, the final climb before the lap. You can see at 6.6 .6 kilometers, he comes through at 16.48. So we're going to be looking for splits to the teams behind here. And there you get one. Iacopa Bortolis maintains second position right now, 21 seconds back, with Renee Sommerfeld in third at 22 seconds. So they're skiing together with one lap to go. Are they going to fight to chase the American, or are they going to be content to fight for the silver medal? And I hope it's the latter right now, as Malasinski seems determined to keep that lead all the way to the finish. And now you see the chase group led by Sommerfeld, number, or sorry, led by Iacopa Bertolis, number 13, Sommerfeld, already coming up. They can see Malasinski at the top of that hill, but the pace to me seems to have slowed down a little bit now that they know they're secured in metal contention. It's a group of five. They have to be careful with each other now to not uh, use too much energy and fall out of that group that's contending for silver and bronze as Malasinski climbs to the top of the final climb on the third lap and makes his way into the stadium here shortly. Keep in mind. And there's tape fronts again. And look at all the American athletes, ski jumpers and Nordic combined skiers cheering on their teammate Malasinski as he hammers over the top of the hill. And there's a look back at number three, Andreas Odison. You can see some of the athletes, number 15, Atushi Narita of Japan making their way up. And here's that group of five. So let's take a look at the numbers. We've got number five, Ayakopa, number 13, Renee Sommerfeld, number seven, Paul Walsher of Austria, number six, Eider Johan Strom of Norway, and number two, Yuri Kambalinka of Czechia, still hanging tough in this fight for the medals. It's great to see Yuri uh, you know, able to stay in this this fight for the medals after a great jump, putting him in second place. It, interesting to see too, uh, Tristan Sommerfeld came from a minute four back, so uh, he's pretty dangerous this lap if he got involved with that lead group. He is for sure dangerous, but he's also expended a tremendous amount of energy. There's Nicholas coming around the lap. He gets a look back at the chase group right now. He's calculating what he has left in the tank. Into his Final trying to establish what he should be spending right now as he comes through the lap at 19.22 with one lap to go. One lap to go to the finish line. He sees that chase group. They're just about 20 seconds, maybe. Let's get a split here, hopefully in a minute. In just a few seconds, Nicholas gets a bit of a break before he heads up that big climb for the final time. It is 20 seconds on the nose. Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany now taking up the pacemaking duty. He's got Paul Volscher of Austria on top of him, as well as Eider Johann Strom, Yuri Konvalinka. 
Tristan has gained almost 40 seconds on the leader, so this will be very interesting to see if he has anything in the tank for the last lap. Well, and again, Max, he he definitely has to uh, take into consideration the other four skiers that are right on his heels. You can see there Coach Gregor Lindsay from Canada, but coaching for America right now, cheering on his athlete. The American flag's waving out here on course right now. This would be fantastic. There's another coach from Park City, Adam Loomis, running up the hill next to Malasinski. Adam's, Adam's a pretty fast runner. <laughs> it doesn't say much about Nicholas's skiing. Adam is a, a great athlete unto his own right. There we go. Sommerfeld looks like he's centering a blistering pace. So he's determined to continue to close the gap, but to really string out this group of athletes vying for the podium. Looks like Konvalinka has come off of that group number two now. And here's, I'm trying to make out a number. Looks That's like number, number 11. 11, Benedict Grobart from Germany. He's trying to regain contact. I think he's still making his way up to that pack right now. That's a cool shot right now of the Austrian coach. Malasinski over the top of the hill right now. 21 minutes and nine seconds. Sommerfeld only eight seconds back. Ayakopa Bortolis, they are coming. They are determined to make contact with Malasinski right now. Nicholas now having to to change his math in his head. He's got to get on board when they make contact to give himself a chance. This is the definition of why Nordic Combined Racing is so exciting. Anything can happen throughout a race. We have Bib 13 now in second place, making a charge for first. 20 seconds ahead at the lap and eight seconds at the top of the hill. Sommerfeld absolutely charging right now, trying to make contact with the American. You can see it's not eight seconds anymore. They're gonna make contact right now. And what does Malasinski have waiting in the tank to ski with this German and Italian athlete pack coming up right now. You still have a Norwegian there, Strom, trying to get back onto the metal pack. Malasinski looking over his shoulder. Sommerfeld going around Malasinski as they go out of screen. This is gonna be a fight right now, folks. We've got three athletes together and two just behind. Less than a kilometer or two kilometers of skiing left in this 10 kilometer race to decide the medals for this Nordic combined event. This is very exciting too, given the fact that there's also five nations contending. There's gonna be a lot of teammates in that stadium just waiting to see uh, who comes around in first place. And there's number nine right now. You can see some of the athletes finishing their third lap still coming out of the backstretch. We're waiting for our five leaders. I look back at the top of the hill right now. This is a pack of athletes just hammering over the top of the climb for the last time, relieved. Here comes Evan Nichols, number 24. He continues his upward march up the results page. You can see he's, he's distanced himself from number 12 and number 16. So Evan doing a fantastic job today on the cross country skis. Looks like the snow has slowed down a little bit. Now, this is a shorter shot than we've been seeing, Max. I think it's still pounding out there. All right, Tristan Sommerfeld now officially in the lead. Ayakopa Bartolis just a half second back. It looks like Malasinski now off the pace of the leaders. You can see him there. Here comes Sommerfeld in, her, in the lead right now. Ayakopa Bartolis in second place. Nicholas Malasinski in third, leading Eider Johan Strom and Paul Valscher. Oh, this is gonna be an exciting finish, folks. Do any of these athletes have anything left to give on this final climb right now? You can see Sommerfeld trying to drop the Italian Iacopa Bartolis. And the, the, the hill that you see, folks, is not the top. It actually turns the corner and continues up. Right now, you can see number seven, Paul Valscher, trying to pass the American with number six, Strom of, of Norway on his heels. The American in third right now for the bronze medal in that pack of three. So I'd put him in. Pain. And here comes Sommerfeld hammering over the top of the climb. Bartolis looks like he's right on the rivet in bike racing speak. The two of them clear the top of the final climb to go down into the stadium. And here you look and you see number seven, Paul Valscher of Austria, number six, Strom of Norway. They're over the top right now, pushing. It looks like Malasinski did indeed leave a little too much out there on course. 
What a brave effort from the American. And now the race turns into Germany versus Italy. You're gonna see them rip around this final corner right now, plowing that powder into the stadium. Again, usually the move comes on the hill. Right now with all this fresh snow, it's gonna come in the stadium. You can see the Italian, Iacopa Bartolis, pulls in front of, Rene of Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany. Tristan put too much out there. It looks like the Italian is going to try to lead into the sprint lanes, although he's dying too. He looks over his shoulder. <coughs> it looks like the Italian has a pretty healthy lead oh, going into the home stretch. Iacopa Bartolis, he is sprinting into the stadium. Sommerfeld, he says, I'm done. He's content with the silver. He's skiing it in. The Italian takes the gold medal for Team Italy. What a day for the Italians at Whistler Olympic Park. And Sommerfeld, Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany, three seconds back, a heroic effort. Tristan started at a minute and four. He caught all the time. He still continued to set the pace. And Paul Walscher rounds out the podium for Austria, nine seconds behind the Italian. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating, Max. Oh, what a, what a gutsy race by so many athletes watching uh, Nicholas Melichinsky trying to hang on that entire race. That was such an impressive effort uh, to and watch Malisinski, fifth, fifth place for the American, but one of the gutsiest performances I've ever seen in Nordic Combined. He had a little lead in hand at the start. He more than doubled it in the first lap. He tried to ski from the, from the, the start to the finish line alone. He paid the ultimate price in the last lap. You learn something every time you race, Max. Yeah, that reminds me of actually one of the great Canadian skiers, Becky Scott, just loves skiing from the front. It's such an impressive way to, uh, to race. Absolutely. Everything to gain and nothing to lose. Iacopa Bartolis on your screen right now, today's champion, a gold medal for Italy. I believe their first medal of the championships. Fantastic to see him take that home for the Italian team. They were disappointed in the relay. That is a great day for Italy. So, that's a great day. We just call the women's race. <laughs> oh, gosh. Double Italian champions here in Nordic combined. What a great sign for the Italian program as we watch our athletes here sprinting into the finish line. From Germany, Manuel Sonora from Italy. All right, right now you see a Japanese athlete. That's number 12, Kayotaro Yamazaki. Oh, he trips himself up a little bit. Is it enough to hang on for 17th place? You can see these athletes, regardless of their, their finish place, are pushing everything to the line. And these are tired legs after pushing this fresh powder in Whistler for 10 kilometers on this grueling course. Number 16 there, Killian Gudel of Austria. Here is number here 24, comes. Evan Nichols. There's number 24 coming into the finish line here. Finishes in 22nd place. Followed by bib number 10 uh, Evan, from Evan Slovenia, Matthias Garbash. The there's our champion again, Iacopa Bartolis of Italy. Seems to be shaking off the race already. He's gotta be overjoyed with that gold medal. And to be on the podium now, two gold medals for Italy just today in Nordic combined. I was so excited, folks, I forgot, but the Italian women led by Annika Seif of Italy putting on a display in the women's Nordic combined. She virtually led from the line to the finish line, from the start to the finish. Great day for the Italian team. And there's another Italian, Stefano Radovan, crossing the finish line. And here comes number 28, Carter Brubaker from the United States. You can just see the exhaustion on these athletes. This is the toughest conditions to race in. This new snow just piling up. They have to plow through it the entire race. What an exciting race, Billy. That was incredible. Number two there, Kam Valinka. He had a great jump. He came up a little bit short, but he left it all out there on course. He looks very, very satisfied to take uh, for, for his result today. Here's Radom Sudik, Czech athlete. 
You can see every single athlete going 100% right till the end. What a show was. Here's number 29 into the final push, into the finish line, the final sprint. from well, and again, Annika Seif and now Ayakopa Bortolas, two gold medals today for, a for Italy and for Nordic combined. Fantastic showing. I have to say, looking back at the race right now, here comes number four. This is Hector Kapustik. He looks like he's making an adjustment. Potentially, he broke a pole. He's now getting a new one. At the back of your screen, you see American number 27, Caleb Zuckerman right now. And number 36, Jan Simek. A lot of young athletes in, these, in this field. And at these ages, Caleb only 17 from the Ford Sarah Ski Club. He's having a great championships. He's got three more of these, or two more of these left. So a lot of development still for the young American. And here comes number four. This is Hector Kapustik. He is only 16 years old. Great showing for him. Obviously a great jumper. We saw this in the women's race too. Some of these athletes can, can attain uh, great jumping prowess at a young age, but they have to develop that aerobic engine to complete the Nordic Combined. There's Caleb Zuckerman coming in. 32nd place for the young American. He's got to be happy with that, Max. This is his first World Junior Championships. Oh, absolutely. It's a competitive field, and these athletes are all very, very close. You can just see the athletes as they cross the finish line. <laughs> absolutely exhausted. I know that feeling all too well. Folks at home, they don't even feel their legs right now. They've given everything they have to complete that race in that short amount of time. 25 minutes and 59 seconds for our winner today, Ayakopa Bortolas. That's a blistering pace given the conditions. Absolutely, those are impressive times for these young athletes. Here comes number 39. Itupuli out of Finland. He seems to have skied a very strong race. Again, he started in our wave at the very back. So he's passed several athletes on the way today, leaving it all out there on course. But looking back to the finish, I thought it was incredible. Ayakopo, he set the pace on the first lap. It seemed at the beginning content to just let Malasinski ski away with it, but he saved enough energy that when Sommerfeld did catch him there on the third lap, he was able to latch on and, and continue. And as Sommerfeld just gassed it on that final lap, closing down the lead, the American American athlete had Ayakopa hung behind him and then was able to come around in the final few hundred meters there to take the win for Italy. Just an absolutely incredible race for Ayakopa Bortolas. Just brilliant. The poise, the maturity with some of these young athletes. And here comes a couple more athletes right now. We've got number 34 and 37. Yeah, Eric Kapias from Slovakia and uh, Megzen Amin Kuduli from Kazakhstan. Yeah, from Kazakhstan. Yeah. Amin Kuduli has been uh, jumping in just ski jumping events as well as competing in Nordic Combined in North America, starting at the World University Games and now again here in Nordic in Whistler Olympic Park. Coming, looking so good. Mid number 37, close behind. That is Magazine from Kazakhstan. Yeah. Complete exhaustion, Max. That is a long ways to ski in fresh powder like that. And like this course is relentless, or even working on the downhills, there is no rest. There is nowhere on this course that you can't work harder to go faster. There is virtually no recovery in the entire two and a half K loop. All right, as we await our awards, we're going to look at the Olympic rings, the fantastic legacy of the Callahan Valley and the Vancouver Games in 2010. It's so great to be back here for the 2023 FIS Nordic World Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. It's really a testament to the Black Tusk Nordic Event Society for having the vision to put this event on and to bring the world back to the Whistler Olympic Park. Yeah, and they've done a fantastic job here in Whistler. Just a first class event, excellent conditions on the ski jump, on the cross country tracks, just a gorgeous setting. 
a lot of excellent performances from our athletes. And for Nordic Combined, we still have one more event, the mixed team event going on tomorrow. And there's a look at our results. Ayakopa Bortolis, he started at 23 seconds back. He was able to overcome that deficit to win the race. Tristan Sommerfeld coming from a minute four. Paul Walscher rounding out the podium with the bronze medal right now. Eider Johan Strom of Norway in fourth. Nicholas Malasinski hanging on for fifth place. A, I have to say hats off again to Nicholas though. That was such a gutsy, gutsy race, a brave effort, and he really almost made it happen. But this is just a re relentless course, as you said, Max. And in these conditions with this dumping snow, it's really, really hard to meter your effort for 10 kilometers. It's a 10K that skis like a 15K right now. Oh, absolutely. And you know, starting in first place isn't always the absolute best place to be. Some of those guys that were able to uh, ski in a pack, you know, 15, 20 seconds back, you can really save a lot of energy. So to ski out from the front with a lead of 17 seconds and come so close was just such an impressive race. Well, I have to say, Max, you mentioned it before, but Nicholas kind of reminding us of Prefontaine, the American runner who just refused to give up the lead. Yeah, and I, I have so much respect for that style of racing. Absolutely. Gives me chills. So great job to all of our competitors here at the Whistler Olympic Park today in the men's individual Gunderson Nordic Combined event. They fearlessly flew off the 95 meter jump here at the Olympic Park this morning to establish their pecking order for this brutal 10 kilometer race on a relentless course in this dumping snowstorm, plowing through the powder in just about 25 minutes. And there again, a look at the top 10. Our podium, Iacopa Bartolis from Italy, Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany, Paul Walscher of Austria, fourth place going to Norway with Eider Johan Strom, and fifth place for Nicholas Malasinski of the United States. Yuri Konvalinka skiing, also a brave race, starting in second, finishing in sixth. Benedict Grobert moving up from 11th to take the seventh place. And there's number three, Andreas Odesson. He moved back to 11th, but again, a, nice, a young athlete from Norway, really, uh, <clears throat> proving himself here and our American athlete Evan Nichols he skied such a heroic race I think at one point he was in the top 15 maybe even the top 10 but it shows that the calculations for snow like this it's tricky you know and I think that's what makes Iacopa's victory that much more impressive you know he skied the lead dragging on a few other competitors in the first lap but s saved enough in the tank that when Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany made contact he was able to get on he hung on to the German and then was able to pass him in the final few hundred meters to take the victory for Italy and to join his teammate Annika Seif of Italy as <laughs> double gold for Italy and Nordic combined and Max if you predicted that one this morning I would have bet against you but it's a really a win for the sport to have the Italians here on the top of the podium for men's and women's Nordic combined at the Whistler Olympic Park. Absolutely. And I do have to give a shout out to Trish and Sommerfeld for that race coming from 13th place over a minute behind at the start. So he really laid it down today. That's his uh, second medal of these uh, World Junior Championships. And you can see him on the left side of our screen right there. Tristan Sommerfeld on the left. Ayakopa Bortolis, our champion today in the middle of your screen. Paul Volscher in third place for Austria cheering with delight. They're so excited. They're probably relieved too. That was a tough race to stare at from the start line with that snow coming down. Notable too, Tristan Sommerfeld skiing a fantastic race, making up over a minute to take the lead there. His father, an overall World Cup cross country champion, has to be proud, Renee Sommerfeld. We're gonna roll out for a few moments here, folks. Thanks for joining us today. for this race. Big
I'm here today with Yapo. Ya ya Yakopo. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yakopo. Yeah. Yakopo.
All right, as we await the awards and the crowning of our Italian champion, Jacopa, we are actually gonna go down to the award plaza right now to our field reporter, Tom Stevens, who's with our champion from today. I'm here with today's winner, Jacopo. Jacopo, how was the race today? We're yeah, the race was uh, pretty good. Uh, I felt good uh, uh, already in the first lap, and then I tried to uh, really push hard, harder and harder every lap, and it went pretty good. And were you expecting to catch that American the whole time, or take me through that? Yeah, uh, I didn't expect that to catch him, because uh, uh, in the second lap uh, I have uh, I had uh, still uh, 30 seconds to to the leader, and so I didn't know, but. Uh, the German uh, helped me to to catch him, and yeah, at the end we we got him. Awesome! Congratulations. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tom, and it's great to hear from Jacopa there. It's incredible. I mean, as he say, said, you know, that he didn't see a chance halfway through the race, but he kept his focus and his head down, and not only was he able to stay with uh, Tristan Sommerfeld but catch Nicholas Malasinski and actually fight and come out today's champion. So, so good for the Italian. And now our field reporter, Tom, also was able to speak with the women's champion. That's Annika Seif of Italy as well. Hi, I'm here with the winner. Take me through the race plan today. It looks like you just led right off the start. Uh, yes, uh, the first one was just one second before me and uh, yes, the tactic was just go take her and uh, go as first for all the race and try to do my rhythm and it went good, so I'm happy. Was there any point in the race that you thought that the second place might catch back up to you or were you pretty confident in the front there? Uh, no, I was, I was almost always a 20 second before her, so uh, I was always paying attention to keep that time and uh, uh, almost all the race, I had al always the same time, and uh, yes. Congratulations on your title. Thank you, bye. <laughs> all right, thanks, Tom, again. So great to hear from Annika Seif of Italy. That was such a great race to watch, Max. Yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, second place, the German, uh, Natalie Armbruster, uh, followed by the Austrian, Lisa Herner. Uh, an awesome competitive field. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed both those races today. Yeah, and you can see... You know, same tactic, Annika Seif basically leading from the start to the finish. Nicholas Malasinski tried the same tactic with a dis different result. I mean, that's one of the beautiful uh, but frustrating challenges of Nordic combined. And again, in the women's race, Lisa Herner coming up from seventh place, passing four women in front of her to take the bronze with Natalie Armbruster starting in fourth, overcoming a 20-second deficit to finish for the silver medal. It was, it was great, <laughs> just amazing, Max, as former Nordic Combined skiers. It's great to see the this from, from our side and to be able to call these exciting races, especially with such a shakeup at the front of, of the race in both of our events. Uh, oh, 100%. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these athletes have in the tank tomorrow for, uh, for some more Nordic Combined action here at the Whistler Olympic Park. Yeah, as you said, the mixed team event, two men and two women from each nation vying uh, for another chance at the medals here at the FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships at the Whistler Olympic Park. So cool. Uh, we're gonna be right back at you folks uh, for the Men's Nordic Combined Awards uh, with Iacopa Bortolis taking the gold over Tristan Sommerfeld of Germany and Paul Walscher of Austria rounding out the podium with the bronze medal. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the Men's Individual Gunderson Awards.
All right, everyone. We are ready to go to the awards plaza for the medal ceremony at the 2023 FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships and your medal winners for the individual Gunderson Start Men's Nordic Combined. Good afternoon and welcome to the Whistler Olympic Park and to the FIS Nordic Junior U23 World Ski Championships for the award ceremony for the Nordic Combined Junior Individual Gundersen Woman. Bonjour et bienvenue au Parc Olympique de Whistler pour les championnats du monde de junior U23 FIS de ski nordique pour la cérémonie des vainqueurs du combiné nordique junior Gundersen départ individuel chez les femmes. will be presented by Les Medailles seront remises par Jonas Wurt, Technical Delegate, Nordic Combine FIS. Accompanied by, accompanied par, Reed Carter, Vice Chair, Black Dust Nordic Events Society. In sixth place, representing Germany, en sixième place, représentant l'Allemagne, Trina Kupfer. In the fifth place, representing Germany, en second place, representing Allemagne, Cindy Hash. En quatrième place, representing Lautrich, in fourth place, representing Austria. Annalena Slavic. The bronze medalists representing Austria. La médaille de bronze représentant l'Autriche. Lisa Hirmer. Silver Millis, representing Germany. La Médaille d'Argent, représentant l'Allemagne. Nelly Hamann Brewster. the FIS gold medalist and FIS Junior World Champion for Nordic Combine 2023 representing Italy. Votre médaille d'or et champion du monde 2023 représentant l'Italie, Hanika Sief. The gift will be presented by Les Cadeaux seront présentés par Tim Hope, Managing Director, Whistler Olympic Park.
in honor of our winner today, the national anthem of Italy, en honneur de notre champion du monde, l'hymne national de l'Italie. One more time, your applause for our winners. De nouveau, vos applaudissements pour nos gagnants. All right, Max, look at this amazing women's podium. Uh, such a great day to see this young group of pioneers showcasing their sport here at the Whistler Olympic Park. Again, seeing Annika Seif of Italy bringing home that gold medal for Team Italy. And then German Natalie Armbruster and Lisa Herner of Austria rounding out the podium. It's so good to see many nations here for Women's Nordic Combined in such a stacked field. It's great, great, great to see that level of racing, especially given such tough conditions here with all the new snow. Oh yeah, and what a day for the Italians with the double gold, and not too shabby for the Germans and Austrians either, who uh, achieved a podium in both the men's and the women's events. Yeah, talking about diversity of nations, it's great to see uh, some of these European nations getting onto the medal table right now. Um, you know, Norway obviously doing fantastic in cross country this week, but uh, on the ski jumping and Nordic combined side of things, we're adding a lot of, of different countries with Finland taking uh, the men's jumping yesterday, um, and as well as the Italian victories today, followed by Germany and Austria. So mixing things up there. Well, and the Canadians on the ski jump as well with uh, with Alexandria. I was Pete. leaving that one for you. Oh, okay. We can't forget that one, Billy. Absolutely not. That's the highlight of the week here. So, I mean, again, Max, a historic moment and the passing of the torch from Steve Collins handing um, Alex the medal last night. 40-plus uh, years separating their victories at the Junior World Championships, but great news for Canadian ski jumping as Alex and Abby continue to pioneer forward on the Women's Ski Jumping World Cup. So with that, we're going to be taking another short break as we set up for the men's Nordic Combined Individual Gunderson Medal Ceremony here at the FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships at the Whistler Olympic Park.
All right, folks, and we are ready now with the men's individual Gunderson medal ceremony. Live in the stadium is our own Jacques. Stay tuned. Here we go. So good afternoon and welcome to the Whistler Olympic Park and to the FIS Nordic Junior U23 World Ski Championships for the award ceremony of the Nordic Combined Junior Individual Gundensen Men Podium. Bonjour et bienvenue au Parc Olympique de Whistler pour les championnats du monde de Junior U23 FIS de Ski Nordic pour la cérémonie des vainqueurs du combiné nordique Junior Gundensen individuel chez les hommes. The medals will be presented by Les Medailles seront remises par Jonas Bruch, Technical Delegate Nordic Combine FIS. Accompanied by, accompanied par, Reed Carter, Vice Chair, Black Tusk Nordic Events Society. In sixth place, representing Czechia, en sixième place, représentant la Tchèque, Yeri. Karavanlika! In fifth place, representing USA, thank you. In fifth place, representing the United States of America, Niklas Malachinsky. In fourth place, representing Norway, en quatrième place, représentant la Norvège, Hidal Johan Strom. The bronze medalist, representing Austria, la médaille de bronze, représentant l'Autriche, Paul Walcher. The silver medalist representing Germany, la médaille d'argent représentant l'Allemagne, Tristan Sommerfeld. The FIS gold medalist and FIS junior world champion for the Nordic Combined 2023, representing Italy. Votre médaille d'or et champion du monde 2023, représentant l'Italie, Jacopo Bartola. The gifts will be given by Les cadeaux seront présentés par Nadine Brent, Manager Sport and Program Whistler Olympic Park.
in honor of our winner today, the anthem of Italy, en l'honneur de notre champion du monde, l'hymne national de l'Italie. One more time, your applause for our winners. De nouveau, vos applaudissements pour nos gagnants. All right, and look at that podium. Great day again for Italy. Iacopa Bartolis, and like you mentioned, Max, of course, for Germany and Austria as they round out the podiums in both the men's and women's events. Great to see Tristan Sommerfeld there. As we said earlier, his father, Rene Sommerfeld, former World Cup champion in cross-country skiing, must be super proud. You can see the conditions just changed so much. It's been dumping powder all afternoon, making for extremely tough competitions out here at, the Whistler, at Whistler Olympic Park. And... <laughs> it continues to do so. It's going to be great skiing. We're going to go to some women's highlights here coming up in just a minute. You can see here there's Lisa Herner of Austria. She skied a fantastic race, passing four athletes in the race to take the bronze medal today for Austria. And here comes number four, Natalie Armbruster. She made up 20 seconds there to take over the, the three athletes that's, or sorry, two of the athletes that started in front of her, you can see her just powering. She had such a strong race today. Even at the end, she was still trying to go for gold. She takes the silver medal for Germany. And then here, a look at the start. From Annika Seif, uh, the Italian eventual champion today, who yeah. just really went at it solo uh, shortly after the start and, and never looked back. Yeah, great, great race. You can just see her composure here. Again, just plowing through all that new snow. It's really tough conditions, but she metered her effort just perfectly, crossing the finish line. To take the gold medal for Italy, you can see there Arm Brewster still charging at the finish for the silver, but really Seif just absolutely putting on a clinic, as I love to say, here at Whistler Olympic Park, taking that gold for Italy. And there are our women's champions in the individual Gunderson 5K event. Again, so, so amazing to see all these athletes who are able to put two incredibly difficult sports together. And there's a look at our top 10. Yeah. Beautiful podium shot. Gorgeous backgrounds here at Whistler Olympic Park. And here we go with some highlights from our men's individual 10 kilometer race. American Nicholas Malasinski just charging out of the start. This is literally one of the gutsiest races I've ever seen. He again tries to go from the start line to the finish line solo. He increased his lead by over 20 seconds in the first lap alone. 
But again, the, the powder on this course, really challenging. He was unable to maintain that as Rene Sommerfeld from Germany charged up from over a minute back at the start. Iacopa uh, Bartolis of Italy hanging on to the German and then eventually able to catch Nicholas Malasinski as they made their way uh, toward the final climb. You can see there Iacopa Bartolis meter his effort perfectly, passing Sommerfeld in the final 300 meters. Sommerfeld content with a silver medal after starting in 13th. And Paul Walscher of Austria crossing the line in third, taking bronze for the Austrians. And there they are now on the podium. What a great, great competition. So many surprises, Max. Yeah, no, I love Colin Nordic combined. It's the most exciting sport in my mind. And you can see there, Eider Johans Strom taking fourth for Norway. And Nicholas Malasinski with his brave effort holding the lead right up until about eight and a half kilometers finished fifth place. And tomorrow, folks, we will be back for the U23 and Junior Nordic World Championships. We've got cross-country racing in the morning, as well as we've got Nordic Combined Mixed Team event in the afternoon. I'm Billy DeMung. Olympic champion here from Vancouver, joined by Olympic Nordic Combined skier Max Thompson from Canada. We'll be with you again tomorrow for these exciting 2023 Nordic Junior and U23 World Championships from Whistler Olympic Park.